All right, so we are leaving the Sand Flats Recreation Area to go grab some breakfast at the Moab Diner. Uh, can't wait to get some pancakes. And then we're gonna come back and I think we're gonna tackle Hell's Revenge. Yesterday we did fins and things, uh, but I really wanna tackle Hell's Revenge. Um, then from there, we're gonna head on back down to the Transamerica Trail and hopefully we'll get to um, Canyonlands at some point today. All right, we're back on the Transamerica Trail. This is Little Canyon here. Uh, this is part of the trail. Uh, very technical part of the trail, probably the most technical part of the, the trail that we've come across so far, actually. Um, just left Moab. What a great city Moab is. I really enjoy Moab. Do you enjoy Moab? I like Moab. Yeah. Um, I think Christy would enjoy it better if we were to leave her in Moab <laughs> before we go play on the trails, but to each their own. Um, I got some stickers for the back of Apple, which are pretty cool, so I can't wait to show those off. Kind of a badge of honor for Apple, you know? all the places that she's been that's it we're making our way on to yuba state park is the goal for today where we'll camp against uh, the backdrop of a real pretty little lake that they have there and that's the current situation there is no shade at all no none no if you want shade you gotta make it Piece of bacon, man. And just like that, scenery's changed again. We're on Gemini Bridge uh, Trail, coming out of Moab. <coughs> and now we get some grass, baby. Still got plenty of sand, though, don't we? Tons of sand. Oh yeah. And rock. Sand and rocks and gravels and stuff. I would have whooped the ass, Daddy, but. <laughs> Coming into a storm there. Got a nice picturesque view of the storm and the dust and all that that it's doing. And there goes the dirt, the dirt devil deal right there in front of us. Mm -hmm. Wild, right? So it's pretty windy right now. Looks like this is the front of the storm, uh, which is interesting because I remember coming through a pretty bad storm last time I was going, leaving Utah though, or maybe that was Idaho. Anyway, this is it. So I was just telling Chrissy, I put it in four high to drive through this because it's pretty sandy and, um, and now it's raining too, so just in case I came across any mud or anything. But man, it's a whole lot more fun to drive in four wheel drive. And it just makes me think of how much fun it would be to drive like a long travel suspension truck through the desert like this. This would be badass. Can somebody let me drive or let me ride with them at least? Does anybody have a long travel truck or friends with long travel trucks? I just want to ride through the desert in a long travel truck. Alright, so now not only is it raining pretty good, but this is all turned to mud. Which is wild. And you can hear how thick it is just all over the, the truck. Crazy. In there. I don't know, but it, yeah, it just it looks like a meteor hit. I mean, it's just it's crazy. And you come across a couple of places out here that are like that. It's really neat. Yeah, so that's one side. That's the other. That's sweet. Yeah, there's a little bit of rain over there. What kind of plants are these? They're like real rubbery feeling. I think succulents. Chrissy says succulents. I was 
telling Christy, you got to be a pretty resilient plant to be able to survive out here or anything, you know? I have to say that this part of the Trans-American Trail is probably my favorite. This part? Yeah, out west. Yeah. It's really beautiful. And the scenery out here changes constantly. Versus it seemed like we were in the southeast for the whole... A long time. <laughs> yeah. Really crazy. Beautiful, though. Chrissy brings up a good point. She says it's not much wildlife. I think it's because there's not much water either. <laughs> you might want to consider bringing water with you. Just a small recommendation. But there again, if you didn't know that you should bring water with you, then you probably shouldn't be doing the Trans America Trail. Jokes! All jokes aside. <laughs> so, Christy and I just got on the topic of we need to get mountain bikes. And I, the bike I'm trying to get is a pretty decent bike. And uh, it, I mean, it, and it costs pretty decent too. Chrissy just doesn't understand. She's ready to go get her bike from Academy, <laughs> and uh, which is fine, you know. But For what I'm gonna do. So we got on the subject, and I asked. It, I wonder have they rent mountain bikes in Utah? To rent mountain bikes in Utah is fifty-five dollars a day, from eight a.m. to five p.m. Now that's the business to be in right there bicycle renter but Christy said hell another $20 I'll just go buy my bike from Academy <laughs> well that's the truth well they wouldn't have to lug it but they're probably not as good as the ones there in Utah and then to rent a to rent a side by side yeah, now to rent a side by side is $400 for, those cats are making a killing for four hours how many hours is it I think it's for the day I for hope day? lord jeez I hope I can't my god when I went to Vegas, there's some um, stuff. I don't know what Prong those are. Horns. Pronghorns. Yeah. Yeah. They run so weird. They do run weird. So. Big old butt. <laughs> it's probably because of big old butt, she said. Yeah, so Vegas, it costs like $200 to rent a Harley. Utah costs $400 to rent a Polaris. I need to find out how much it costs to. Hang on, I'm going to call and find out how much it costs to rent a Jeep. Disgusting. No, because they like seeing wildlings. Yeah, I mean, gross. They like seeing wild wildlings. Uh oh, mobile network not available. It was just available. Oh my god, <laughs> they killed it. <laughs> they knew I was calling for the Jeep rental. Mhm. Mm Ugh, they just killed my service. It was literally on four generation. That's crazy. Yeah, Five o'clock. They're done. I called two. G <laughs> I called two Jeep rental places in um, Moab. It's like five thirty here. And, uh, yeah, they're out. They're not having none of that. So I don't know how much a Jeep costs, but if a Polaris costs four hundred bucks and a mountain bike costs fifty five bucks, I would imagine the Jeep's probably about a grand mm. at least. After taxes. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a that's a paved road out there, but uh, it's got a few potholes. But yeah, I like dirt roads. <laughs> oh, potholes! So the whole time, Christy and I just seen them hopping around like big ass rabbits, and wow, those things can run. <laughs> we just saw them run for the first time. Wow, that was no wonder they hop because they got enough muscle to do it. My God, that's probably why they run so fast because they've been hopping. Yo, this this road right here is legit worse than the Trans America Trail. We just come up on a um, front. 
Chrissy looked like that guy we passed. <laughs> you remember that guy? Oh yeah. What was? Where was he? Was it? Clever advertising. Eighty-two dollars a night. Eighty-two dollars a night. So I was just telling Chrissy about this hotel or this little restaurant here I stopped at last time. So that's the same exact place that I stopped at last time, and I took a shower there. Um. <clears throat> anyway, we are on forty East Main Street. East Main Street. About to turn. We're in Green River, Utah. And the sign said that uh, cheaper gas up ahead, and it was right. It was uh, quite a bit cheaper, actually. So we got some cheaper gas. Filled up the shower. Filled up the shower. Also filled up my gray water, gray water jug. And the um, it just coming straight out a little uh, spigot there at the pilot. This place must be known for the watermelons, because there are signs for watermelons, like every two feet. Did you see the giant watermelon? No. Yeah, it's like a fluke. I'm trying to figure out where we're going. <laughs> hey, it's a taco truck. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, this is Green River. And uh, the tap people that we came across earlier, there's a little fair or something going on. All inflatables. Kid come in there with sharpies in it or sharp knives in his pocket. Destroy the whole carnival for everybody. Yep, there was the turn. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to turn around number 522,633. Jeez, Louise. Must be also known for their speeding cop patrol or something. Because these cats do not get in a hurry. Why get in a hurry when you can just enjoy life? Isn't that what they say in Teddy Rod? I just thought of something. Um, other than the fact that the Garmin has me all screwed up here. I just thought that we might not be able to buy beer. Just now thought of that. Look at that house. That house is some kind of old man. Mm -hmm. And then just some random storage sheds. It's where we hide the bodies. Yeah. If we gotta off somebody, we just throw them in our storage units middle of the desert. We call that the Buzzard Lounge. Keyboard news at George Rand. The man just said on the radio, quite possibly the worst words I've ever heard. He said, it may snow. We don't do snow, y'all. Mm -mm. We is way out on snow. My baby ain't fitting to stay in no snow. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> she gonna have me at at the hotel quick, fast, and in a hurry. <laughs> the man just said snow. So we're outside Green River here, and um, we've come across this area of rock that's just so different from the other rock around it. 
And those real resilient rubber-like plants that Chrissy likes so much are all crispity, crunchity, and crackety right here. But then, really weird. Look. What causes that? Crazy, uh, crazy landscape here. Like it was, definitely looks like it was all covered with water at one time. Um, and I think that that might be salt. I don't, it's, it's really weird. I think that it might be salt though. Now, I think the last time whenever I came through this area, uh, you couldn't drive on it because it was kind of mushy. And I remember touching some white type sand like that because I was interested in the consistency as I was this time too. Um, and I want to say that it left a real chalky residue. So I think that these are like old salt lakes is my hypothesis. Now uh, I've done absolutely no research and I did not stay at a Holiday Inn Express. So GBs. We have run out of the GBs both on data, data plan, and memory card. We've run out of GBs. Undescribable beauty. I would say that Utah is beautiful. so far has been absolutely gorgeous. I am kind of glad that we bypassed the canyon lands. Uh, well, I'm not kind of glad, but at the same time, I'm not too bothered. Uh, Canyonlands would have been very fun to go to, but I think that we both, I think I speak for both of us when I say that Yellowstone would be the better one. If we're going to break off for a day of doing something like that, mm -hmm. Yellowstone would be, Yellowstone. yeah. So we're going to stop at Yellowstone, uh, but first we're going to stop in Ephraim, um, Utah, and sharp at the wall marks because I gotta get a new memory stick uh, for Christie's phone or memory card so we're having an absolute catastrophe when it comes to electronics here um, everything's good as far as the main electronics that matter which is uh, the wiring for the fridge and the fridge itself so everything's good there everything's good on the uh, the rig itself but the nightmare comes with this hairball of a bug that evidently I put in all small electronic devices. It doesn't matter if it's a remote control <laughs> or a computer. But anyway, they just, it, 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 for whatever reason, they, they just stop working sometimes. And, uh, you know, maybe it's just meant to be that it stopped working. But anyway, we're going to stop. We're going to get a memory card so that way we can keep everything and then edit it as we can. I bought a memory card, but I bought a the cheapest one I could find at the place where we stopped, and Walmart would be a heck of a lot cheaper, so lesson learned. This is the view outside of Green River, Utah. Got a little rainbow over there. Then the canyons. And then just when you think that you've seen the most beautiful, if you look over there, there's even more. It's wild. So I'm just sitting here thinking because, you know, Christy and I really see the benefit in having a rooftop tent. But what I don't like is the fact that the rooftop tent is so big and unstealthy that sometimes, you know, you kind of want to be a little stealthy. Uh, so it's so big and unstealthy that I don't really care for it that much. I don't know that it would truly offset uh, the truck any more so than this water thing I got or anything else that you put up there. but mainly just the big and bulkiness of it but what I was thinking is because I hate the sunroof 
I wonder if there's a way that I could get some kind of like just cut the roof or not not even cut the roof just somehow or another get a cap that would go up and then you would access it through the sunroof hole here so you just leave that open or you still have it but you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. like the uh, the guy from uh, uh, 4 by 4x overland or something like that Andrew and then his name Andrew the guy on YouTube from overseas anyway um, he's got the Land Rover his or Land Cruiser um, has got a little deal like what I'm talking about they just chopped the whole top off hmm. and put this little cap yeah, thing in. I have to show it to you it's pretty cool but if I could somehow find out that somebody that does that um, or somebody that wants to try to do that and then sell it I'd be happy to loan you my truck for you to work on it. So we found the stand. Somebody had mentioned um, on uh, the forums, uh, the TAT forums, or the TAT group on Facebook, uh, that there was sand. Found the sand, and I can see where this would be not ideal and could slow you down. It's not that bad right here where we're at, thankfully. Um, and but and again, I just can't appreciate it enough the fact that I'm not on a bike But you know they They might handle all this stuff different than what I'm thinking I'm gonna try it. You should try it back <laughs> Yeah This sand um, we have significantly uh, decreased our gas mileage but this sand is so fun that you just, you can't stop in it. I mean, it's pretty deep. It's crazy though, because then it goes to, like this is okay, but then it gets back to sand. So now the roads turn from like sand to cement, and we are, we're actually on a road. We're on Lower San Rafael Road in Hanksville, Utah. And uh, this road has been quite the mix of scenery. And uh, it's really crazy the differences. We've seen a little bit of everything today. So now we're starting to move into look for a camp mode because it's starting to get dark. So hopefully we'll find one here around this. Come across these sand dunes still in Utah um, but way off in the distance you can't really see there you go right there it's hard to see there's cows in these sand dunes like what are what are they eating crazy right Which way do you want the door? Facing, that thing? facing this way because we're remember I told you where I'm gonna put the truck facing where? I'm gonna have the truck like this okay. so I have it facing me Yes. All right, so you can't really see it, uh, but we got an awesome campsite uh, right here on BLM land, which is my favorite thing about out west is BLM land. Um, and you can't see it, but just wait until in the morning. We're setting up camp right now. They were so nice, whoever was last here. They left firewood, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, we're not going to use it, though. Christy and I, we like the, the whole fire thing, but, you know, really it's... It's not necessary, so we'll leave that for whoever. But what they did leave were these three pallets, uh, these three sheets of uh, particle board or plywood or whatever, and cut up. And what I'm doing is I'm going to take those with us because what we could use those on is, or use those with, is that solar shower right there. We got it filled up. It's a little bit too cold now, um, but I imagine tomorrow night it'll be just perfect. So yeah, wait until in the morning though. Wait till I show you this uh, shot of the uh, sunrise. So real quick, uh, while we're setting up camp, uh, I'm taking this opportunity to clean out the fridge. So check this out, this is new. I try to stay stocked up on uh, my beverage of choice. I had two of them bust some kind of way, but there it is right there. 
I see it right there. There's a hole. It literally cut through. Check it out, Christy. So it literally cut through. So uh, bottom line is I got to put uh, some cardboard down there in between them. Otherwise, they're going to do that. So lesson learned. But yeah, completely emptied. So now we're going to deal with that. I dumped it out and we'll go from there. Some folks might wonder what we're having, so I'll show you. Christy is having the rest of that blazing pizza from uh, Brown Dog, and I'm making camp pizzas, which are super simple to make, super fast. So with the camp pizzas, what I like to do is heat up the um, pepperonis, make them kind of crunchy, put your flour tortilla on there, the little tortillas, flip it over, and then put some sauce on there. All right, so now you put your sauce on, put your cheese on, put your pepperonis on. Then you fold it over, and you can get it as crispy as you want. I like mine a little bit crispy. As you can see. It's kind of like a little hot pocket. And then I like to sear the edge right along there. Makes it real good. Christy enjoys them. But she's got the good pizza.